Hey guys, so um, out here trying to find some local dirt uh, around outside the Charlotte area of North Carolina. I'm not going to be too specific because um, unfortunately the area that I did find has some posted signs uh, around it. So I'm not sure how vigilant they are in you know messing with people out here riding, but I see a lot of tire tracks in the dirt. And uh, anyway, that's as much as I would say about the uh, location. Um, and I've just tried out the new uh, Tusk D Sport Adventure rear tire. Uh, yes, I just swapped out the rear tire. I'll explain that. Um, a lot of people will say, oh no, you got to do both tires at the same time. And um, I saw a lot of negative things in the reviews of the D Sport front tire. So, and also on a more off-road oriented tire, there's often mixture from front to back between models and brands. Um, so as long as it's not a, you know, a bias ply radial kind of mix up there, that can be dangerous, um, or at least hard to ride. So, uh, everything's still bias ply tube type. Um, and the front tire on the KLR so far has done everything I've asked of it on gravel and dirt, and I haven't had any problems in mud really either. Um, the, the rear tire was my Achilles heel. So that's what I changed. Um, I posted some video of doing that, uh, or I will post it if I haven't yet. Uh, I'm falling behind on putting my videos together. But um, anyway, out here on a beautiful, beautiful day and it's pretty much quiet other than the birds i don't hear any other riders out here i wish there were more riders out here i'd feel better about the uh, possibility of you know it being accepted norm and not intervened with law enforcement so um i'm not sure how long i'll stay out here anyway i thought this would be a good time to do a, a basic okay what have i done upgrade wise and what do i think of my 2022 klr adventure abs uh, i've had it on a variety of uh, terrain and i've done quite a few upgrades so i'm going to go through the list and uh, i've got almost a thousand miles on it 950 or so uh, right now i've already done the oil change so i'll start there i'm going to turn the lens around here and uh, point it at the bike there we go okay so i did the uh, first oil change at right at 600 miles and oh look there's a stick um i went ahead and installed the uh, drain plug this the low profile drain plug so that i wouldn't hit the other one on a rock and uh, maybe damage my uh, the case of the engine transmission. So let me pull this. Holy cow, what did I hit? That's crazy. That was in there. I didn't even feel that. Okay. So, uh, other things I did. I got these um, foot pegs off of Amazon for like 28 bucks and uh, free shipping. And they were they said they were for all sorts of Kawasaki's they weren't for the KLR I had to modify them uh, so I'm not gonna give brand or anything specific on that I did I did that first because I was going off-road and I did not want to be on the slip and slide foot pegs so and I figured for 28 bucks they're worth a shot so I had to modify them to fit they fit they've been working ever since um, and I did that week one so no problem so far I like them uh, they they do dig into your boot. You gotta you can't slide your foot across those at all. So you gotta remember to pick your foot up if you need to move your foot. Um, and then also in line with that is I put the JNS Engineering foot peg lowering uh, mounts. They also get rid of the rubbery uh, saggy feeling uh, you get on the factory foot peg mounts. Um, in lowering the foot pegs, it helped a little bit with the shifter position. Everybody's having a hard time getting their boots under the shifter. So, walk around here. So you can see it did lower the foot peg about an inch. And when I'm wearing my, when I'm riding urban, I pretty much wear my combat boots. Um, and 
they fit under there perfectly, no problem at all. Today I'm riding on my first ride with my new um, TCX Adventure boots, um, drifters, and they are way thicker and there's no tactile feel at all, so it's really a different feeling. I'll talk about that later. Um, anyway, so that did help with that. The only thing is I did have to adjust. I'm gonna keep walking back and forth and back and forth, but I did have to adjust my brake lever and I did it as much as I could. I lowered it down because since this lowered, this was way high and my boot would almost go under it. And that could be dangerous in an, in an emergency old shit situation. So I did adjust this down as far as I could. And what I mean by as far as I could, um, when you do adjust it down right here, it's 12 mm millimeter lock nut. You take this pin out, cotter pin in the back, slide this pin out, and then you turn this up righty tighty and it lowers this that's how that works based on that fulcrum so I did that as much as I could based on what's behind here you got to take these bolts out take this cover off there's the brake light switch for the for the brake pedal it only has so much adjustment so I bottomed it out and I've got this adjusted as far down as I can and it not have the brake light on at all times so you got to make sure you don't do that um, then when, uh, if you saw my first video on the bike, I had the factory seat. Um, I've got the Kawasaki low seat. It lowers it about an inch and three eighths according to the uh, documentation. When you pull it out of the box and side by side it with the factory seat, it is amazing the, the difference. But the comfort's the same. I went on a 200 mile ride the other day and it was fine. I, I felt no difference. But what I did feel is that now I can, sorry, now I can put my feet down. I was on my tippy toes at a stop. Now I can put my feet flat and my knees even have a little bend in them. So I feel much safer uh, maneuvering the bike around that way. Um, I've got the Tusk uh, handguards. Um, that was a bit of a love-hate relationship putting those on. It's nice to have them. They're very sturdy. They were half the price of Barkbusters uh, at the time that I bought them. Problem is, you can see the marks here from the vise. Have to do some serious, serious uh, bending to get this to line up um, properly on this handlebar. Um, and I mean a big vise mounted to something steel, very sturdy. Uh, if you don't have that, you're going to have a real hard time getting these on the KLR anyway. I don't know about how they are with other bikes. I don't know if it's the KLR or the handlebar or what it is, but these are take a lot of strength and a lot of, um, and a very secure vice to bend those and get them to fit. Um, I also had to get some, the bolts that come with them don't fit and the bolts that are in the factory handguard or handlebar end don't, they're too short as far as don't fit. So I had to go to a hardware store and get the proper uh, match up a bolt and get, I think this was like 35 millimeters long. So that would thread in, but also bottom out. The ones that come with it are too long and the ones that are coming on the bike are too short. So I had to get those. Yeah, that's like a dollar fifty, but let's just keep that in mind when you get those. Um, and then, Let's see, I bought the TAC from 3D parts, 3D cycle parts. I have not installed it yet. Um, I'm getting ready to buy the crash guards. Uh, so when I do the crash guards and everything, because you got to take, apparently you got to take the side of this off to mount the TAC and get it wired in. So I'm going to do all that at one time. Um, and then, of course, the new rear tire. This, I think, will make... Other than the seat making it easier to handle this bike with short legs, I mean, I've got a 32 inch insane, but still, it was, you know, it's a tall bike. The um, best thing about these tires, I mean, excuse me, I think the best thing I've done so far other than that seat's gonna be these tires. Just, you know, on the road, they feel no different really uh, yet. I haven't noticed anything. I'll let you know sometime if I do. But anyway, that's what I've done so far uh, in the 900 miles that I've had this. And I like the bike a lot. I mean, it gets a lot of negative Nellies out there saying, oh, you can't take it off road. I've, you know, I was off road pretty good. I mean, I'm not some wild man. I, I don't, 
haven't ridden dirt bikes and jumped dirt bikes since I was a teenager. So, but as far as finding some double track and single track, muddy, dirty stuff, ruddy, rocky, rudy, I've been on it. And even with the factory tire, um, that made it tough, but um, it can be done. And I'm determined to see how far I can push this bike um, without damaging either me or it. Uh, hopefully, knock on wood. Probably just jinxed myself. So, anyway, I'm gonna have some video of riding back here. Um, hopefully, I don't get um, a ticket for trespassing. I'll let you know.